Spintex TV. Local Voices, Global Connection. Lovely viewers, it is a beautiful Tuesday morning. You're welcome to Technovation Tuesday on Spintex TV. This is where we bring you all the latest news, trends, news, updates in the world of information technology and what people are also doing with it to create innovative things in Ghana and other parts of the world. So if you like such things, please consider subscribing to this page on Spintest TV and also click on the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time we post a new video. So it's me, Gideon. If you are ready, let's go. Spintex TV, local voices, global connection. Now, today we'll begin with some fun facts, okay? We'll begin with some fun facts. One of the most popular search engines in the world is Google. But do you know that the original name of Google was Backrub? Yes, that is B-A-C-K-R-U-B, Backrub. Now, this is a search engine that was created by Larry Page and Sergey Bryan. One might wonder, what is the meaning of Backrub? You know, the meaning of Backrub is to analyze the backlinks which are the most important factors for online SEO, that is search engine optimizations, and also to determine the importance and visibility of a website. That was the reason why in the creation of Google, Larry and Brian decided to call it Backrub. But then as the years kept on, you know, everything evolves. So as Backrub, you know, was growing, the management decided to change the name from Backrub to Google. And guess what? Google is not just any name they picked from somewhere. It also has a meaning. Google is from the word Google. That is G-O-O-G-O-L. In fact, it is a mathematical term with the number one followed by a hundred zeros, which means Google is the large collection of information and resources. So it moved from backrub, a, a term describing the ability to analyze backlinks and also search engine optimization, you know, help to a term meaning a long, large collection of information and resources. So that's just the fun fact for today. Now, today we are going to talk about laptops and why they are important and the guide you need if you would want to purchase a laptop. Let's begin with why it is important to get a laptop in this 21st century. Computers come in shape and forms. A laptop is one of the forms of computers. In fact, it is a portable computer that you can simply place on your lap and assess information and use it for any productive work anywhere, anytime. So there are reasons why you need a laptop if you've not thought about it. One is it value for money. If you compare laptops to traditional desktop computers, you would realize that there is value for money in that it is mobile and it is portable. It is like purchasing one thing to do something and being able to use that particular thing for several other things. Especially in the case of uh, people who buy laptops that also can serve as touchscreen tablets. Yes, there are some laptops that you can actually flip the screen and it will become a tablet at the same time. That means you are not only having a portable computer, you are also having a tablet at the same time. So there is a great value for money if you should compare it to the traditional desktop computers that are stationary and it's at one place. The other reason why um, um, laptops give you value for money is that there is also the ease and versatility that comes with it. I just spoke about some laptops being able to, you know, transform into tablets. You know, laptops have this versatility that comes with it. You can use it for gaming. You can use it for, for your professional work, your productivity work, your, your, your school assignments. 
you know, there are some laptops that are so robust. They are made to withstand re- re- dust and water and rain. And one reason why it also even makes it versatile is the ease with which you can carry it, you know, around the portability part of it. You can put it in your bags. You can put it in your in your traveling bag, in your purse. And it just gives you that room to use it for anything you want to do. That is what makes a laptop versatile. That is the reason why you need a laptop and you should consider buying one. Now, one other reason why you need a laptop in today's 21st century, if you are someone who can use a laptop or who can use a computer or any smart device, is the improved performance that comes with it. Modern day laptops have gone way ahead and it provides some level of, you know, efficiency to help you with whatever work you are doing. And in fact, if you should compare laptops of today to the olden days laptops, that were, although portable, yet they were heavy. Modern day laptops are very sleek, very light, lightweight, you know, they are not even all that big. So they can even sneak into your, your, your handbags if you are a lady. They can sneak into your backpack if you are a camper. They can go anywhere. And it's not just about the portability as I've already talked about. It is the power and efficiency that, that comes with it. Because considering the shape and size that these laptops come in, you might think that they can do something little. But don't let the shape and size... Uh, lie to you. It's like what we say in Ghana here, don't mind the body, mind the engine. Yes. When you consider the engine in modern day laptops, you'll be shocked at what they can do. The level of performance that they can give you the end user. These are reasons why you need a laptop as compared to mobile phones and, and you know, other smart devices. I think one more reason that I would want to talk about is the the environmental sustainability uh, that comes with using laptops. If we should compare desktops to laptops, desktops are desktops. And so it consumes everything bigger than a laptop. The power consumption for electricity is bigger with desktop as compared to laptops. The space they take, desktops take quite, you know, a bigger space in your home, in your office, than a laptop. Because you know what? Desktops will come with their monitors and will come with the system unit. Even if you want to go with the two-in-one or all-in-one desktops that has only the monitor and has the system unit and everything in it, it will still come with a keyboard and a mouse. And these two things alone can take up some space on your table in your office. But compare that to a laptop. It's just one all-in-one device that sits on your table, on your lap, on a table, on a bench, anywhere. You just open it and you have access to your keyboard, your touchpad, your scroll, uh, your trackboard, and your monitor. In this case, your screen. And if you're even lucky to buy the modern you know, sleek types of laptops, which even has touch screens and even has the screen being a, a tablet that you can even use a scribbles pen and then all uh, these graphics pen. It means you are killing several beds with a stone. Because think of it, if you are a graphic de- designer or a photographer like myself, and you would want a graphic t- tablet to help you with your graphics, you need to buy a computer and then also the graphic tablet. But if you have a modern laptop that can also, you know, accept these pen, graphics pens and stuff, all you need is to just open your laptop, flip the, the screen, and just use your graphic pen directly on the screen of the laptop, thereby eliminating, you know, all the space that the, the traditional desktop computer and the graphic tablet will take on your table and also in your office, thereby, you know, taking up so much space and not bringing about this environmental sustainability. That is the reason why a laptop is a way to go. 
So this is what that I have for you for this section about reasons why you need a laptop. Now, with that being said, then the next question would be, what do I need to consider if I would want a laptop? Oh, yes. If I have said laptop is good and you need one, you need to consider quite a number of things. In fact, this morning, I'm going to give you 10 things, 10 things to consider if you want to buy a laptop. And this is a question that has come up severally. People call and ask, what? I want a laptop. Can you help me? Then ask them, what and what is influencing your purchase of a particular brand of laptop? Or is influencing you to purchase the laptop? Going forward, in another time, we will do things to consider when buying a smartphone. But for today, let's look at the 10 things to consider before buying a, a laptop. The first thing, obviously, you need to consider if you want to buy a laptop is the purpose. You need to determine the primary purpose for your laptop. Are you buying it for work, gaming, multimedia? Because different laptops excel in different areas. So identifying your need will narrow your options. It will really narrow your options. There are some laptops that are built and designed and programmed and it's better fit for people in the multimedia space. People who are into the graphics, people who are into animation, people who are into photography. There are also laptops that are also built for people who like gaming. And then there is a general laptop that is used for work and productivity. Even in that space or even in that small niche, there are, you know, various categories for, you know, the laptops for the purpose of just work. Do are you the small enterprise? Are you the one man, one person uh, worker who is doing everything? Do you like small things? So there are the laptops that they call the atoms. So in the area of purpose, maybe you need the laptop to type your assignment. You need your, your laptop to type your document in the office, but then you don't want a laptop that is big because you travel with small bags to work. These purposes will influence the kind of laptops you need to buy. So the first thing to consider is the purpose you want to use the laptop for. Please, it is very important. It is very important. You always need to consider the purpose for which you need the laptop. Now, after telling yourself, I am a photographer, so I will need a laptop for multimedia. I am a gaming fan. I will need a laptop to play uh, Lord of the Rings. I will need a laptop to play uh, Mortal Kombat or Rise of Nations or whatever game you need your laptop for. Or I am the secretary in my office, in my small church, in my small business that I need a laptop to, you know, key in my accounting details and log and all that so i don't really need a very big laptop I, I just need it for only documents typing and stuff then you have to ask your, yourself the next question so the next thing to consider point number two your budget what is your budget for that purpose for which you need the laptop <laughs> obviously if you need a laptop for multimedia the software alone that multimedia uses should tell you that you will need a bigger budget for the kind of laptop you would want to use for that multimedia work. Come to think of it, Photoshop alone is not cheap. Talk of Adobe Premiere and After Effects. Now, think of Capture One and all the other multimedia softwares. If I should even leave the Adobe suit and even take you to the free ones, I mean, you need to buy add-ons. You need to buy plugins and all these things to help you with your video editing, with your photo. Even when you want to even want to use a free, very important animation tool like Blender and you want to really do a good work, you still need some plugins which might not be free. In fact, if you are into multimedia like myself and you want to use a very free multimedia software like OBS, you still need some plugins. All these things also consume space on your hard drive. 
on the storage. So you need to ask yourself, what is the budget? You need to set a budget and stick to it when buying the, the laptop. Because, you see, you need to consider the different price ranges to find the best value for your money. And you need to also prioritize the features that matter most to you and strike a balance between performance and affordability. So budget is very important. So when you go out to the laptop shop and you say, I need a laptop for purpose A, B, C, then they will give you the, bu the budget. Okay, so we have a laptop that will serve your purpose that is costing 3,000 Ghana CDs, 4,000 Ghana CDs, 8,000 Ghana CDs. We have some that can be as low as 1,500 Ghana CDs, even 1,000 CDs. So if you do not have a budget, Now, there is a saying that if you do not have anything in mind, you settle for anything. So if you do not have a budget in mind, the shop owner can convince you to buy a laptop to serve the purpose for which you want, which might be too expensive because you might get the same or similar laptop to serve the same purpose for, for, for which you intend buying the, la the laptop at a cheaper affordable price so always set a budget that for this purpose of laptop i want to buy this is the kind of money i am ready to part with so that i can get this particular laptop for this particular purpose that is uh, point number two so point number one is purpose point number two is budget now the third thing you need to consider if you want to buy a laptop in Ghana here, is the performance. The performance is very important because you need to consider the laptop's processor. It's like the brain. The brain or the heart of the computer. You also need to take into consideration the RAM and the storage capabilities. You see, you need to consider the processor, the RAM and the storage these three things impact the performance, especially for those who are into multimedia and gaming. Because if you are into multimedia and gaming, it means you need to put, let's say you are into video editing, you need to copy the video files, the raw video files onto the computer before you edit it. And when you edit, you also export the edited file to the same computer. Now, let's imagine the raw video files are like 16 gig. Trust you me, you can edit a video with raw video files of 16 gig and the video output can come out to be 18 gig or 20 gig. Now, bear in mind that the raw files is 16 and then the exported video is 20, making how many? 26 gig. Now, the software that you even use to, you know, edit that video is no small size on the co computer. In short, all that I'm trying to say is that the storage space on the laptop is something you need to consider, and that comes under performance. The memory that is used in processing and storing all these things, all these tasks and process on the laptop is also very important. It's very important. Imagine you are a student. Or you are a shop owner you don't need a laptop for the purpose of gaming or for video editing or for picture editing you just need to install an accounting software to key in your ledgers and your account details and, and stuff and you go for a laptop that has a memory of say one gig or two gig okay and the storage space is one gig i'm just assuming Come on, one gig is too small, you see? So you need to consider the performance, the processor, the memory, and the storage. How much space? And funny enough, eh, someone will say, oh, but one gig space of uh, documented, it's okay. After all, how much I will document, you know, the size of the document be? Bear in mind, you are not only doing one 
document for the rest of your life. You are going to, you know, type a lot of documents. But, you know, strange and funny enough, people who say we only need a laptop for only typing where the document are also people who would want to use that same laptop to play music and also watch movie in, the, in their spare time. So in as much as the primary purpose is for typing Word document and doing assignment, that same person also has other purposes in mind. These are secondary purposes for which the person needs the laptop. That is why it is important to take into consideration the performance. That is point number three. Point number one is purpose. Point number two is budget. Point number three is performance. Now, point number four is portability. We have already underscored the beauty and the importance of laptop being better than the traditional desktop computer. That it has that portability advantage over the traditional desktop computers. So, in buying a laptop, portability should be something to consider. Because, you see, if you, if you travel or carry your laptop often, you would want to opt for a laptop that is lightweight and slim in design. Yes, because that extra weight, that, especially if you are someone who, you know, cross countries, you would understand the value of weight. If you are somebody who travels outside Ghana, you, you know that before you board the, the plane, your bag or your luggage is weighed. And if there's an extra weight, you need to take all those things out. So weight, no matter how small it is, is very important. It's the same with uh, laptop, especially for ladies who carry handbags or shoulder bags. That extra weight in that laptop can cause, you know, some, some, some uneasiness to your shoulder. So the fourth thing to consider is the portability of the laptop. Now let's move on to the fifth point. We've talked about the purpose, your budget, portability, and performance. The fifth thing to consider is the display and resolution. The display and resolution is very, very, very important. And let me hit here hard, especially for our sisters who come to us and say, brah, better have a laptop, cute one. I have a laptop, I have a because I have a laptop, I have a laptop, I have a laptop, I have a laptop, I have a I'm only using it to type as assignment and stuff. These same people are the people who want to watch high resolution movies, video clips, they are TikTok videos and stuff on this same laptop after finishing typing their assignment now if the resolution and the display is something to not to be worried about you've wasted your money so it doesn't matter the kind of purpose you are using it for in fact in fact the purpose will even influence the, the resolution yes for graphic designers and people in the multimedia space the display and the resolution is very 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 important if you're into multimedia Photography, videography, you need a laptop with a screen that has been calibrated to give you near or actual representation of the colors in the pictures or in the videos you are editing. Oh, yes. That's the reason why majority of people in the multimedia space would want to go with Mac computers or Mac laptops because majority of the screens of the monitors with Mac computers, they have been calibrated to give you near or 95 or actual representation of colors in photos and videos as compared to other monitors or other screens. In the same way, if you, you are not even in the multimedia space and you are, you are only going to use it to do typing and stuff, bear in mind, whatever you watch has an effect on your eye. Oh, yes. That's the more reason why books that we even use the paper is not just any color they could have used blue papers in printing school textbooks they could have used black sheets or papers in printing school textbooks but then they use off-white or white papers this is because 
when you are looking at a screen for quite a continuous number of times, it has an effect on your eyes. That is the reason why when you are buying a laptop, the screen resolution and the display, when I say the screen resolution, I mean the quality of the pictures or the videos that it, that is represented on the screen. Is it a 1080 by 1920? Is it a 7020 resolution? Is it a, a 22 inch, an 18 inch, a 24 inch, a 71 inch? I mean, talk of all the inches. These things have an effect on the kind of experience you get with either a text document or a word document or a video document or an image document. The display quality greatly impacts your overall experience. You see, so determining the screen size and resolution that suits your preference is very important. Higher resolutions provide sharper images while larger screens offer a more immense viewing experience. Imagine you are viewing a video and the video is a 4K video and you are viewing that video on a 720 screen. Trust you me, you've wasted your money and your time watching that video because the kind of experience you are supposed to get, you will not get it. It is like you trying to view a picture on a Nokia 3310 screen. You know what will happen? Everything will become black and white. Why? Because a Nokia 3310 doesn't have a smart screen, a color screen. So displays and resolutions are very important. You need to consider that. Now, after dealing with these first five things, the purpose, the budget, the performance, okay, the display and resolution, then portability, then you also need to consider, you now need to consider the operating system. The operating system, what we call OS. You need to choose an OS that suits your need and performance and preference. Because there are a lot of OS, there are a lot of operating systems. There is the Windows operating system, there is the Mac OS operating system, there is the Chrome OS operating systems, uh, Linux, all these operating systems are there. Even some uh, laptops that even use Android. Oh yes, there are Android operating systems for laptops there. So you need to ask yourself, what operating system do I prefer? Because the operating system you choose will also commensurate or go hand in hand with the kind of even softwares you can install. There are some softwares that does not that do not have uh, uh, versions of that software to work or match other operating systems. For example, there are so many softwares that you can download freely online, or you can even pay for that does not work on Mac OS. There are some also softwares that you can only get to work on a Mac OS computer, and which does not work on a Windows operating system. So these are things that you need to put at the back of your mind or in your heads when you are considering buying a laptop. Because software compatibility is an issue. It is like you trying to install WhatsApp on a Nokia 3310. You know it is impossible. Senepa and Masui and Maso is not going to work. Why? Because the operating system for a Nokia 3310 cannot accept, cannot accept WhatsApp. Because the navigations and the ways to go about things on a Mac OS machine is not the same as that of Windows. And neither is it the same as that of Windows, uh, uh, that of uh, Ubuntu or Linux. I've seen a lot of people who are very conversant and comfortable using Android com uh, phones for example phones but are very bad when it comes to apple phones yes they face a lot of challenges because the navigations and the layouts of iphones are not the same as that of android phones it's the same for computers too the operating system sort of gives or regulates how 
to assess things on the operating system. So you have to choose an OS that you are very comfortable with. That is point number six. Now let's move on to point number seven. We are talking about things to consider when you want to buy a laptop. Now, after considering the kind of operating system, and let's say you go with the most popular one, Windows. The next thing you need to ask yourself is, okay, now I have decided that for point one, the purpose for buying the computer is that I'm going to use it to type my assignment and do my, my research work. So it's for only academic or document purposes. Okay, if that is the first purpose, You've moved on to the next day, that is the budget. I have set aside 2,500 Ghana CDs to buy such a laptop because I just want something small, something cute, not big. I don't need a, a laptop with a very big memory or storage space. I'm comfortable with any processor so far as it can process Word documents. So for the performance, that is what I want. I am also lo looking at uh, a very lightweight and slim, a very lightweight and slim the design laptop in the area of portability. For the display and resolution, I need a small screen size and I need a small resolution uh, computer. And then I want a Windows operating system laptop. With all these six things considered, the next thing that is very important to consider is what we call connectivity now what do i mean by connectivity you see you you are not going to use the laptop in isolation you would want to connect a pen drive to it to copy document to go and print if you are this kind of a person who says you are only going to use it to type and do your research either you connect your laptop directly to a printer or you put a, a portable device like an external drive or a pen drive to this laptop to copy that your assignment or load document onto that laptop if these and more are the reasons and like i said most people who use these kind of uh document purpose sake laptops who also want to listen to music and watch me movies then you need other things on this laptop to help you you know do whatever work you are doing and that's what we call connectivity what are the usb ports on the laptops does the laptop have an hdmi port after typing your document will you add will you attach the laptop to a projector to project to your client if that is the case then the laptops should have either a vga port or an hdmi port so that it can connect to a projector. Does it have an SD card slot? If, if, it, if it has a USB port, is it USB port 2 or USB port 3 plus? Does it have a Thunderbolt port? Does it have an Ethernet port where you can connect the laptop to an internet? If you should go to an internet cafe or you are even at home and you have an MTN or Vodafone table net and you want to give it an ethernet cable that doesn't have all these ports that you have a headphone jack port so that if you want to do zoom meetings on this same laptop or you are listening to music or video and want to use a headphone that you have a port all these ports and stuff are what we call the connectivity so you need to consider this thing also very well before you buy the laptop and like I would always advise, you must you must be futuristic. Today, you say you want to use it for only typing and uh, inputting your documents. But tomorrow, you might also want to watch video and you need a headphone. Tomorrow next, you might want, want to join some Zoom meeting from a church or from your schoolmate or from a business partner and you need headphones or a port to usb port to attach a webcam <laughs> or you need to print that document all these things are things you should consider don't look at your budget and go for a laptop that has limited connectivity you might be 
stabbing your own self. Now, after you have carefully considered the connectivity, the eighth thing to consider is the battery life. Brothers, the battery life is important too. That is what makes it a laptop. A laptop with no good battery life is no more laptop. It's a desktop. <laughs> Why? Because the difference between a, a laptop and a desktop is the battery component that makes the laptop portable. It's not just because it is small. It's not only about the, the design and size. It is a laptop because it has a portable battery life that can make you transport that laptop to another place. So battery life that is offered by the laptop is very important. You need to consider how long you typically need to use it on the go without access to a power source. Oh yes, you need to ask yourself that if I put this laptop on without any power source, without it being plugged on a wall, how many hours will it last before it will go off? You need to ask yourself that so that when you have a business deal with a client and the client says, let's meet at a radio station, at a park, at a football field, at a funeral grounds, at some place where there is no access to power. Or even if there is access to power, there is power outage, you will not be found wanting. So the battery life is very important. So you need to look for a laptop with a longer battery life if you need extended usage away from outlets. The point number eight you need to you need to consider when buying a laptop. Now let's deal with the last two. The last two is also very important. I would say the last two will be that that will be the ninth one and the tenth will be the keyboard and the trackpad. You see the trackpad or the touchpad or the keyboards in the laptops are very important because that is what makes a laptop a laptop that separates it from a desktop. Traditional desktops come with a monitor and a system unit and then a keyboard. Laptops have these keyboards inbuilt, built together with every other component of the computer. So when you are buying the laptop, you need to carefully consider the keyboard. You have to test the keyboard and the trackpad for comfort and usability. Oh yes, sometimes the shape and the layout of the keyboard will not be feasible and will not be suitable for you. It is very important. You have to consider the form factors. Okay? Such as the spacing and its responsiveness. If you type a key, how many seconds or milliseconds does it take? If you have a long fingers and you put your, your, your hands or your, or your fingers on the, the keys of the laptop, are you comfortable? Yes, I'm asking this because, first of all, we've talked about portability, where we said some people want to go for small, slim, and cute laptops. So when it was time to budget for the laptop, you were very, you know, careful with the amount of money you want to spend. And for that, you opted for a very small, cute laptop. Usually, that's what our sisters say. And yet, at the same time, you've realized that in your typing of assignment and in your research work, you are not very comfortable, you know, typing on the keyboard that came with that small, you know, mini laptop. Sister, it is because the size of the laptop comes straight with the size of the keyboard and the trackpad the smaller or mini the laptop the smaller or mini the trackpad and the keyboard and so one of the things that you need to keep in mind is that though you must be careful with the budget you should also know that the keyboard and the trackpad comfortability will have something to do with the size and so the keyboard layout and the size is something you need to really consider especially if you are someone who has a very long fingers yes you will need a very broad keyboard so you don't have pains in your fingers when you are typing so keep that in mind the thing to consider when buying the, the laptop is the size of the keyboard and the trackpad once again in considering the size of the keyboard and the trackpad if you are a left-handed person like myself you really would want the keyboard to be at the left so that you can feel very comfortable typing 
and if you are a right-handed person you do want the keyboard and the trackpad also on on your right unless of course you are like someone as myself who has taught himself how to write and type with both right and and left so that you can feel very comfortable in both hands other than that you should keep this in mind another thing to also you know keep in mind is that usually people who buy laptops from these arab countries yes the text and the layout and some letters are also missing uh, for example if you would want to type the hash sign on the normal english keyboard the hash sign is just shift and then shift three <laughs> but on the arab language programmed keyboard where the at sign and the shift sign and the hash sign and all these other things that make typing and you know all these things fun they are at different places so you also need to keep that in mind again if you are someone who is also into graphic design and animation and for photography you would also want a backlit keyboard when i say a backlit keyboard i mean you know there are some laptops that have keyboards that have lights under the keyboard yes so that when you are in darkness and you want to find your keys immediately you open your laptop the back lights underneath the keyboard will come up so that every keyboard will be visible yes once you know there is something like this you must also know that it comes with extra money that was the reason why i said the kind of work or purpose for which you intend the laptop to serve also has something and everything to do with the budget you want to spend so that is the ninth one now let's move on to the tenth point what is the tenth point after considering the purpose the budget the connectivity the performance the portability the battery life the keyboard and trackpad the tenth thing to consider is the build quality it is very important the build quality is like having a wife now let me explain you see there are some laptops that are so shiny and so beautiful that the little amount of scratch on the laptop leaves a big sign for everybody to know that you are not taking care of the laptop very well oh yes that is the reason why you need to ask yourself what am i going to use this laptop for where am where will i be taking it to if you are someone who is a run and gun person when i when i say run and gun person i mean someone who takes a laptop to everywhere every time either at the park wedding school funerals church you are dropping it pulling it here and there i would advise you that you should get a laptop that has a built quality of anti-scratch that means that the, the the number of times you take it out of your bag and you put it inside it will not leave marks on the laptop and the number of times you flip your fingers around it and dust accumulate on it will not leave mark on it but if you are someone who is also careful about you know rough surface and you want a smooth surface then you, you can go for those sleek shiny smooth surface built quality of laptops because that is what you want again the other thing to consider in the build quality is the hinges because laptop screens flip and turn up and down so the hinges is it plastic is it metal is it solid metal especially if you buy the laptop that can flip and become a tablet you need to take all these things into consideration so these are the 10 things to consider the 10 most important things to consider if you want to buy a, a laptop i can give you more but for now these are the core things to consider if you want to buy a laptop if you like this video please click on the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime we drop a video from spin test tv and also share with your loved ones so that they can also be informed again this production is made possible by highlander media institute if you are in ghana any part of ghana and you want quality photography service video service graphic design that is your logos flyers and you need an animation please don't forget to consider highlander media institute they are on spin test show signboard and you can reach them on 055 8233517 or you can call their or you can call the office line on 0302805304 yes it's it's been me gideon highlander with this so yes thank you for 
staying tuned to this please add you know the extra points that you think needs to be considered in the comment section we need to hear from you well, but until then you will meet same time next week another beautiful bright tuesday morning to talk about the world of technology information security cyber security and everything that has to do with ict until then adios spintex tv local voices global connection